I'm Russ Kickle. In today's episode of American Reef, we're going to talk about planning to fit an oversized reef tank in your house. We say oversized coral reef tank, we mean Mike Paletta's 500 gallon reef tank, which should be actually getting dropped off within a few hours. And uh, I'm going to head over and try to get some footage of that and probably help where needed. Uh, but before we did that, I wanted to get this video released. Um, again, before I head over there, there's a couple announcements. Number one, uh, Bulk Reef Supply actually released that ULM tank trials results video um, where they set three tanks up and, you know, to see which one would work best, easiest, that sort of thing. Again, ultra low maintenance ULM. And uh, so they released that video. Again, definitely wor worth watching the lessons that they learned. Again, are passed along. And then also with uh, Premium Aquatics, basically they have the polyp labs, the, uh, the coral view lenses. Um, those coral view lenses basically Jeff did a video on them and there's a new kit out now where it has three lenses which there's a macro and there's some other colors and they allow you to do much more than you could do with the first one and so again that video does a really nice job at kind of showing us what those lenses actually can do for you and then lastly uh, if you're looking for again what I think is the best fish food on the planet it's American Reefs HPD and you can find it over at AmericanReefHPD.com that being said I'm going to get my butt over there and uh, help unload that tank and while well, you guys watch this video. Why am I in your garage, Michael? Well, Russ, we're approaching the big day where it's probably a couple, three months away, but I'm changing the 300 into a 500 and I'm making the other two tanks much more efficient. Actually, I'm making everything much more efficient uh, for a lot of reasons. One, that tank was put together nine years ago and it was put together sort of in a rush as my old 1200 gallon tank for reasons that we've talked about in the past was going downhill fast. So I had to sort of grab everything up, put that tank together, and it's getting to the point where it's getting difficult to manage, it's a pain in the ass. I, if I have to do anything underneath the tank, I basically have to be a 17-year-old gymnast to go and reach things, turn things off, and tighten things. So I'm basically redoing everything. After nine more years of learning by my mistakes, right, right, right. I'm making this tank a lot more efficient, a lot easier to maintain. Uh, just everything I want in a tank because from my point of view my favorite tank that I've ever had wasn't the 1200 right. It was a 540 gallon tank I had before it So I'm basically going to do the same thing, but on a better more efficient sure. cleaner scale Okay, and well, there's going to be a lot of nuances in this tank that make it a lot better So let's talk about that for a little bit because I don't think we've ever even talked about the original 500 gallon that That you had right yeah the original 540 gallon tank mm -hmm. was in the mid 1990s to early 2000s mm -hmm. it was up for about nine years I actually moved it from Greensburg Pennsylvania to Cranberry Pennsylvania mm -hmm. me and eight of my cousins mm -hmm. took it out of the old house had everything boxed up brought mm -hmm. it over put everything back in it and the corals just did phenomenally well in the tank it had mm -hmm. sunlight hitting it it was just, from my point of view, the perfect tank I've ever had. And you had halogens on that one, right? Yeah, that one had four 400 watt metal halides mm -hmm. on it. And, and actinic uh, fluorescent tubes. I was gonna say, as far as the species inside, predominantly SPS? It was or? all SPS and it okay. was pretty much everything was grown from frags and there were probably eight to 10 colonies the size of basketballs. Yeah, nice. So right now it'd be worth several million dollars in frags, but <laughs> yes. I can't look back on it because the 1200, I did an analysis and it'd be worth about $2 million in frags oh, no. when it was in its heyday. So, yeah, yeah. But I also had a $900 electric bill then with that 1200 <laughs> gallon tank because it required its own 
heating and chilling. Sure, sure. Because it was a room that got sunlight, and some two summers that I had it, it went up to over 100 degrees in Pittsburgh. And that was not good on the electric bill. So that's the, one of those lessons that you learned through those years. Then, yes, right? so this is going to be a lot more efficient, using a lot uh, more cost-effective things than we used to do. No metal halides, obviously. I'm using a lot of the equipment or types of equipment that I've used on this tank and have been successful. Case mm -hmm. in point, um, I'm running the uh, Radeon lights, mm -hmm. the fourth generation. Instead of six that I have on there, I'm going to be running eight on top of this new tank. And the nice thing about it, this is basically yeah. what the tank looks like. Why is, why is there this frame? Right. <laughs> One of the things that I have learned, unfortunately, the hard way is, just like when I'm hungry, my eyes are bigger than my stomach. Mm -hmm. It's the same with a tank. <laughs> My idea of how big a tank the I can fit in the room the and the tank. doors and how to bring it in. So this tank is what the tank will look like. It's built to size. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to do that, but I did it so I could see if I could bring it into the house because it has to go through that door. And we're going to show you in a minute where it has to go right. through, but this isn't how the tank's going to be. It's not going to be narrow and wide. It's actually going to be on its side right. it's like it's this. Going to lay it down. It's going to be laid down. It's going to be four feet front to back seven feet long and 30 inches high. It's only going to sit on a 26 inch high stand. So it's basically going to sit to here mm -hmm. on me. So I'd be able to look at everything from above the tank. I'm not going to need to be reaching over on ladders. I'm not going to be after climbing up things. And for taking photographs, it's going to be a lot nicer because the best shots are always from the top. Oh, I love other thing is, sad to my heart, mm -hmm. is there will not be a canopy on it for me to stack <laughs> crap on it. You know I was going with Yeah, I know you were going there. But instead, <laughs> there will be these across the top. There will be four of these with two uh, radon lights on them. So it will be stretched across, and I can move them. But I'll be able to get into the tank very easily because there will be nothing stopping right. it. There will be my screens on top to keep all the fish from jumping out. <laughs> that, that, those are already going to be built. So as soon as everything goes in, those will go on right away. Mm -hmm. And it will be a much cleaner, easier tank to work on. Now, as you can see, some of the equipment here, first thing, there are lots of these going on the tank. Right. Hopefully not as many as on this tank. Because currently on the 300-gallon tank, the frag tank, and the nano tank, all told, I'm running 37 electrical appliances. I have it down now, believe it or not, to where I'm basically going to be running approximately 18. There may be 19. We just saw another sure. plug. But that's a heck of a lot easier than 37. Right, right. Now, the reason, way I'm going to be able to do that is, one, all the lights are going to go into one of these. Mm -hmm. So if I want to turn them off or if I want to turn one off or whatever I want to do, I'll be able to just flick a switch and do that. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be able to turn on and off by the flick of a switch. All of the power heads will be on four boxed switches, so I can switch off all the power heads all at one time when I want to feed the tank or feed the corals. It's just going to take right. pushing a button. Right. All of the water flow going into the tank is going to come in across the top. There's going to be an external overflow on the side. There's going to be no overflows inside the tank. There's going to be nothing drilled in the tank. So there's right. reduces the risk of something cracking, right. breaking, or whatever. This, there's going to be an overflow along the side with an external overflow like Sanjay has in the back of his tank and mm -hmm. Jason Fox has in the back of his. It's going to run down two two-inch bulkheads down there. It's going to flow across the room and down, then up, and it's going to flow into the frag tank. So there's not going to be any pumps or power heads. It's going to be running off, off the uh, Vectra pump mm -hmm. at around 3,000 gallons per hour. So about 3,000 gallons an hour are going to go in through the frag tank. The frag tank's going to be a three by two by one foot high custom built frag tank. So that will be a lot of flow going into that tank. It will then overflow there. That tank will be drilled. Right. Those overflows will then be drawn down and go back and start at the bottom of the sump. But I will also have it as such that it will be teed at the beginning of those tanks, mm -hmm. of, of that frag tank. So if I want to turn the water off in the frag tank, all I got to do is turn off a knob, right. or I can control the flow. If that 3,000 gallons an hour is too high, I can do that. Or if I want to bump it up at times to get all the detritus out of it, I can do that. It's then going to flow through the sump, which is going to be underneath. The sump's going to be a modified 180-gallon tank. There's going to be baffles in it. The first one's basically going to be bio balls and stuff to break down the detritus. Then it's going to flow over roughly a three-foot section of baffles to, again, catch detritus. Then it's going to flow into the overflow area, which is where the vector pump will be. We'll pump it back to the main tank, 
or there will be another pump in there that will blow the water through a carbon reactor, a GFO reactor, and then into the nano tank, which will be attached to that mm-hmm. tank. Mm-hmm. So it's, instead of having four pumps, which I'm running now for everything, there will be two, mm-hmm. and they will be Vectras in, instead of Eheims and instead right, of darts or any right. of the other things that I run. So it'll be a much more efficient. Plus, I'm taking off roughly four power heads that I'm running now. Right. So that's four pieces of equipment that are disappearing. Right. Right, so right. that will make things a lot easier, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Now, the other thing that's going to be different is I'm not going to run a Miracle Mud system in the traditional sense. Instead, what I'm going to do is run the Miracle Mud in reactors. Mm-hmm. They're going to have their own Miracle Mud reactor. And I'm also going to run a Tunze Kato reactor. Mm-hmm. So instead of having all the Calerpa and all the mud right. in one section, make it easy. To, these basically just fill up and flow over the top. So these be a, will be a lot easier to clean and maintain. Sure. So when I want to take them on offline, like every six months, you put another two or three gallons of mud in, dump it out, replace it. So right. I'm planning on doing that to make it a lot more efficient in that regard. Uh, the sump may have live rock in it. It may not, just for growing uh, uh, copepods sure. and other stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, because one of the things that the sump is going to sit on cinder blocks. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a foot above the, the ground. So I'm doing that so that when I want to drain it, all I got to do is put a hose in, siphon it out. It'll be high enough. They'll uh, drain eight feet away. I can just drain the tank real easily. So it'll be very simple to do. Uh, the tank will also have two dosing pumps on it mm-hmm. that will feed it a lot of different things all the time in small amounts because I'm not going to be fooling around with what I'm doing now, which is hand delivering everything. Um, what else is going to be different about this tank? Uh, there's going to be the over or the power or the flow of the tank is going to be somewhat unique as well. Down on the bottom here where the overflow is, there's going to be three Tunze streams. Mm-hmm. Up here on the opposite side of the top are going to be three Ecotech 60s. Mm-hmm. So those are going to blow and create a gyre along the tank. I may or may not have them on all, the, all three on all the time. I probably won't. I'll probably have two or even one for a while. But then when I want to drink, get all the detritus out of the tank, I'll kick on all of them. That will blow all the detritus out of the tank and into the sump and into the overflow. So it will make it very easy to keep the tank clean because I'm running bare bottom. I know there's a lot of people that don't like bare bottom, but from my point of view, keeping SPS and keeping a really strong flow, uh, and if I ever want to get a Lenardi RAS like Sanjay has, Mm -hmm. who's having so much problems with it, taking the gravel and sprinkling on everything, (laughs) I I can do that and won't have to worry. I mean, the only thing I won't be able to keep in this tank are leopard RASs, but I could put those in a nano tank or one of the other tanks if I decide to put substrate in it. Sure. But that's going to be... A unique way of keeping the tank clean as well. There's also going to be four tons of, uh, uh, I forget the model number, across the top in each of the corners, mm-hmm. and those are going to blow in a random fashion to keep even more flow within the tank. Mm-hmm. So in that regard, there's going to be a lot more flow than I currently have. And I mean, I have a lot of flow now. I have roughly 25 times the tank volume. With this, I'm going to be running close to, when I run everything, it'll be cl- over 60 times the tank's volume. Yeah, yeah. So everything will be cranked. There won't be a, a spot for detritus to settle except to go out the overflow. Now, the other thing I may put on the overflow at some point is some form of mechanical filtration. Mm-hmm. Or I may do it at times when I shut off all the power heads and shut off the flow, feed the corals for half an hour, and then kick the flow back in and then have it flow in through a filter sock or something like that for an hour and then take it off and clean it. Sure. So I, I, I'm still playing with that. Because after seeing what Jamie Craig's is doing with feeding the corals, I'm probably going to go to a much more aggressive feeding system Which for feeding the corals. Which is funny, right? Because you, I think you feed aggressively now anyway. Right? I feed aggressively now, but I also know that I have the water on, I have the overflows going, and I, I tend to take a lot of it out and get stuck up through the skimmer. Right. So in that regard, I'm going to try to make it more efficient in terms of feeding. So one, I get less waste, but two, that I can take it offline. And I don't have the facility that Jamie has to throw it out into a big tank and get all the, the food taken out that way. Right. I'm going to go to a much more aggressive mechanical filtration means for doing that. Right. Now, the other thing that I'm, I'm playing with is I'm going to use either a Vertex and or a Tunze skimmer. But the thing I'm looking forward to trying, and thing I've always advocated, but I've never done actually, is a powerhead cleaner or a, a skimmerhead yeah, cleaner. Yeah, yeah. This is the Vertex unit that just sits on top of the skimmer it constantly keeps the neck clean, and by keeping the neck clean, it should go a long way to making the skimmer much more efficient. Right. So that's one of the things I want to play with to see if it does, and then I'm just going to have the skimmer drain out into its own little compartment that will also be set so that if it overflows, it will shut off the skimmer. Mm-hmm. 
So in, in that way, I'm trying not to get the overflows, not to get the water on the floor. All the things that I've had in the past hopefully aren't going to be the situation. <laughs> I mean, the things I'm trying to do away with are schlepping buckets of water to do water changes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do away with those completely. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it so I can do a 50-gallon water change in roughly 15 minutes. Instead of right now, it takes me roughly 45 minutes to do a 25-gallon water change. I'm trying to increase the flow in the tank. I'm still using the lighting that I'm using. I'm still using the skimmers that I'm using. I'm just trying to make this a significantly better tank in terms of ease of maintenance, likelihood of maintenance, and if there's ease of getting into the tank. Right. Because I'm getting too old to be climbing up on a ladder, leaning over, because I've fallen several times and haven't, yeah. luckily haven't gotten seriously injured, but I've hurt myself enough to go, I'm not going to be doing this 10 years from now. Right, right. Uh, as I, I wrote in the article, that I, the last article I wrote for Reef Builders is, this is my last tank. I'm doing one last tank for myself. Mm -hmm. I know famous last words new. <laughs> this will be roughly, from my estimates, either my 12th or my 14th tank I've set up for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is it, and it's based on the 540-gallon tank being my all-time favorite tank. Right, right. Okay, so i got a million questions for you. Yes. Okay, let's start, first of all, with the idea of the tank. In other words, you have the dimensions here where you're either standing beside the top or the bottom. Right, I'm at, I'm at the top right now. Right. And so when you put that together, right? Right. Basically, those are just two by twos and some screws, right? Two by twos and, and drywall screws. Okay. Very simple. Uh, you need two people to do it, though, because the <laughs> do not want to stay together. I actually uh, did something I did when I had my 1,200-gallon tank. Mm -hmm. In drilling, I drilled through one of my fingers. Nice. And I forgot how painful that is, <laughs> and it took roughly three months for the finger to heal. Mm -hmm. I drilled at the very base. It took three months for it to go all the way to the top and finally be gone. Uh, so that's how long it takes when you draw your fingernails. <laughs> so keep that in mind, kids. Yeah, grab an extra pair of hands. Yeah, grab so have someone help you do this. It's much, much easier. Okay, and so when you built that, right, the whole idea is, hey, let's put it in place, see if I can get it in the house, and that sort of thing. Right, I, I wanted to make sure I could fit it in and how it would look in the spot I want to put it. So I've, I've done all that in the past where I've laid it out. I've marked with tape where it is. I have a pretty good idea where everything is going to go. The question is, it, the dynamics and the intricacies of moving a tank to where there's an existing tank, it's not going where the existing tank is, right. it's going where the frag tank and where the uh, nano tanks are. So those are going to come out and those are going to be out here for, fortunately it's summertime, so I don't have to worry about really heating or cooling them, it's relatively cool in here. Okay, hold on, hold on. So let, let's, let's first walk the path of this tank okay. and then we can kind of go from there. Okay. Ready? have to be lifted up through this step this door is coming off because this is a metal door and it has not liked the high humidity of that room very well mm. now here's the the difficult part is making this bend through here there is just enough room to <laughs> slide it through worst case I may have to take the baseboard off or the baseboard off <laughs> here to fit it that's how close <laughs> it is I mean it's really really close now we've I've done this twice now and I will do it again before I, I right. bring it in before you pull the trigger. but it should should fit right in okay so with that being said what you're doing is you're assuming it's coming in on wheels right so it's on the ground is there so there's no lifting over this rail there's no lifting over this rail it's pulling it around here right. there's going to be suction cups and some means for sliding it <laughs> which is going to be interesting because i'm going to be real curious as to how they slide it we then hit the straightaway which is actually the easiest part of the trip it just comes right through here and into the fish room now where the fish room is it's going to replace the nano tank and the frag tank. It's going in there and it will come out to roughly right where my foot is from the wall. 
for four and a half feet of the wall, there's, it's going to be up flush against the wall, so I'm not going to get behind it on that four and a half feet, which is the same basic problem here. But for three feet, I can get behind it because there's that, up, that little... Right, that indent. Whatever, that indent whatever. there. I can do that. I can work all the way around the front. I can work all the way around the side. And there's not going to be this. So obviously there's not going to be all this crap stored up here. Mm -hmm. Nor is there going to be all of these wires and stuff. I'm going to potentially a much more efficient system mm -hmm. where everything is, is more or less or, a lot more organized than it is. Like all of the lights will be plugged into one master bank. It will sit underneath the tank and it will be plugged into the back. So all I got to do is flick that on or off. So all the plugs and all the lights will be there. Most of the equipment is going to be plugged in over here. There will still be a bigger destaco reactor for calcium reactor because that is the spot on best calcium reactor. That's one of the things I worry about. And the sump itself is going to sit right here, but it will be one foot shorter, Whoa. narrower. Right, right. So the only other thing I got to do is when I lift this out, I got to remove what's underneath this tank and then I have to right. put the tile underneath it's the tank. <laughs> so now, there's going to be a lot of timing issues here. Okay, with that being said, so what you're talking about is taking these three tanks and moving them back out to the garage. No, no, no. I'm moving these two tanks. Okay, so these two go to the garage. We're going to put this tank in here. Okay. By then, most of the rocks will be taken out of here. The rocks, I'm going to start taking out the rocks next month. Yep. Cleaning the rocks, putting the corals back in here on shelving. Curing the rocks, recuring the rocks outside, probably mm -hmm. adding a little bit more dead rock with them. Have probably half or three quarters of this rock out of here. Okay. I was thinking of adding more rock, but I've come to the realization I don't need to add more rock. Sure. sure. Uh, there'll be enough space. All I got to do is have space on there to attach the corals to, then let the corals take off. So then, okay. With the new tank, where's the overflow going to be on the right hand side? The or overflow is going to be sitting right okay, so here. It's right there. So it'll come down from here, flow over to the sump, mm -hmm. flow over to the frag right. tank, drain back down. So it'll, it'll be a lot more efficient because right, right now there's three power heads in here. There's a power head there. Right. And uh, from a moving perspective, you're saying you'll be able to slide that right where those two are and then build it up, get it rolling, and then take basically the contents of the 300 Right, and move them into right there, over. then I'm going to have a, a poor little sump underneath it that's not this big sump mm -hmm. for the short term. There you go. Then once I get, get this out, then I'll put the big sump in. Then you can build it. Then I can build right. up the big sump and have everything else going. Yeah. And then move everything back from the garage. Obviously this is not going to take a day. Yeah, it's gonna, that's where I was going. I'm planning right. this is going to take a week or two weeks after work right. to come in and do this at night. but. I'm taking my time. I started planning this last December. Right. It's now June. Right. So I've spent six months just in the planning and getting everything together. The getting the equipment together, which is one of the things people go, oh, I need this. No. Mm -hmm. I've gotten everything together right. three months ahead of time. I'm not going to be scrambling at the last minute and go, oh, I don't have this plug. I got every piece of equipment I could possibly use and more. <laughs> I have the big boxes to put everything in when I bring this out, put them back in. Okay, so to that point, let's go back out and let's talk about some of that stuff. Okay. Know what the room's going to look like now. Hold on, one question. Yes. Your reservoirs, right? Reservoirs sure. are going to be in here. Okay. Are they no, you be can't this? look in there. That's a disaster. Are they the same? Yeah, there's going to be two 50-gallon pickle barrels. Okay, there you go. One's going to be for freshwater reservoir. One's going to be the salt water for the water changes. Okay, got it. So then as far as makeup, because you have 300, now you're going to 500, which means you're probably going to need 300 extra gallons. Where, where's that all coming from? What do you mean 300 extra In other gallon? words, right now you're going to bring in a 500 gallon tank right. with a sump that's 100 and whatever. And sump right, 180 tank. gallon sump, right. which I'll use probably 150 gallons of it. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Total capacity of the new system is roughly, you know, 700. Right. Okay. So, and right now you don't have anywhere near 700 in all your systems, right. even if you include your 250s. Right? right. Well, I'm going to mix the water up in the, in the 500 while this okay. is out here. I'm going to mix up 500 gallons of water. So there I will have go. the water already ready. I will take that out and store it. Got it. And then as I need it, bing, bang, boom. Got it. Got it. Got it.
first. But you can see there's there's roughly. 1,200 gallons of Instant Ocean salt. There it is. So I'm not fooling around and going, oh, I need a bag of... No. Tried and true. Right? I got 1,200 gallons, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> so there's there's no fooling around with that. Then there are two more of the uh, MP60s. Mm -hmm. So I have three of them all together. Okay. So there's three of those. The Tunzi Streams, two more of those are coming. I'm using one from there. Uh... I have two more of the uh, uh, fourth generation lights mm -hmm. to go with the six that are there. So there will be eight on there. I have four of these. I have two of the reactors for the mud. I have one small Vectra. That's going to power the reactors as well as the nano tank. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a power head in that tank. There's not going to be any of the nonsense that I currently right. have in it. Right. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how many plugs and useless pieces of equipment I have as I'm tearing stuff out, as well as what's in the rock and everything else. Right. Then, uh, I mean, I've already got the doser and the acro power, which is going to be dosed daily. I have some nutrients that are going to be do do dosed daily on a small amount, like iron and potassium. Mm -hmm. I also have uh, a case of Brightwell uh, trace elements, which is what I'm going to be adding to maximize the coloration. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably, I would say by fall, I will build some kind of plankton reactor mm -hmm. and I will be dumping plankton in the tank regularly to, to keep the corals fed as well as some of the dry foods like reefroids and sure. uh, reef benefits and other products that I'm putting into the tank. Um, what else is there? The Destaco reactor will be bigger so it'll be a bigger calcium mm -hmm. reactor because it can handle that can handle the 300 gallon tank but when I get to the size tank and coral growth rate that I'm hoping to get, mm -hmm. I'm going to require a lot more. Right now I lose, if I turn off that reactor, I lose about one DKH a day. Mm -hmm. On Sanjay's 500, he loses two DKH a day. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, you have to have a bigger reactor to do that. Sure, sure. So that, that'll be interesting once that's in place. As I, I didn't really go into depth, but the sump is basically going to be like this big, mm -hmm. but only half as wide. On top of it, it's going to sit a one by two by three, basically a three right. foot by two foot section of the sump right. is going to have the frag tank on it. And you, are you just going to set it on top or are you going to stand? I'm just going to, going to sit it on top. So literally set it on top. It's going to sit on top. It's mm -hmm. smaller. It shouldn't break it or do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there'll be some foam or other things sitting underneath it, but it's not going to add that much weight. It's, okay. it's basically going to be about 90 gallons. Okay. So it's going to be about 700 pounds. Okay. So obviously that's a lot, but <laughs> right. we'll, we'll see how it goes. Right. I'm taking a risk, but what the heck. <laughs> right. <laughs> then on the other end, it's going to sit the nano tank, mm -hmm. which is going to be a, a, a two-foot tank. i got to figure out exactly where that's going yet. That's still up in the air. <laughs> it's going to be slightly bigger than the one I have here. Mm -hmm. It's also going to have an external overflow because the key is I don't want things plugging up or breaking like right. they do now and flooding the house. Right, right. So everything's going to have external overflows on them. So it, everything just goes right out easily. Uh, there aren't going to be anemones in the tank. There's not going to be stuff that could get caught in it and, right. and plug it up. So in that regard, and there's just going to be water from the to go through carbon reactor, GFO reactor, into the nano tank. Okay. And then overflow that. So instead of having three things, like four things like I'm doing now, there's going to be one pump, fu pump funneling that. And then it's also going to be teed off to have a small amount of flow going through the... Uh, Mud reactors. And now you said you have two mud reactors here. Right. And these are them. Okay. And, and the and water flows in the bottom, uh -huh. flows up across the top, and then just drains just out the top. Straight over. It's it's real simple. And so uh, change in Miracle Mud is going to be really easy now. Yeah, I don't, it'll take five minutes to do it. Like I said, everything I'm doing, I'm trying mm -hmm. to make it so it's easier to do, so I'm more likely to do it. Sure. Because one of the rules is if it's easier, you're more likely to do it. If it's a pain in the butt, you're not going to do it. Right. So everything on this tank, I mean, a water change should take 15 minutes. Uh, with how much flow I have in the tank, all the detritus should settle in that sump. Mm -hmm. When I want to do a water change just with a, a, a nice one-inch hose, I'm going to have it marked where 50 gallons are. Mm -hmm. 50 gallons out, 50 gallons in. Piece of cake. And now, are you going to have a pump in your drums that pushes it over there? I have a drum, I have a pump in there now okay. that just stirs the water up. All yep. I do is put a hose on it, and it fills it up now. I'm going to basically you use the same, same concept. Thing, so you're happy with that. Yeah, okay. it works really well, and it's easy. Right, right, right.
And uh, as far as technology, like uh, automated alarms and I may stuff use like a, a Tunze controller, mm -hmm. and I already have, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Spill detectors on the floor. Yep. yep. Other than that, I'm not running a whole lot of technology because that's just something else that will fail. It's a lot more plugs. And right. rather than looking at pH and temperature right. and getting alarms for those, right. and I check salinity every day, with the Milwaukee. Right, right. So I, I've become a stickler for that because I was using a refractometer and I dropped it and I thought I calibrated it right and it was showing that it was at 1.26. It was actually at 1.18 or 1.20, depending on how right, how right. you could read it. Right. So needless to say, I had to bring things up. I was losing things as a result of that. So now I test that every day and I test, still test alkalinity twice a day. Right. Now, how long did that take place before you kind of caught it as far as the refractor? It was like a month. Got it. So in one month, and then you started noticing death or discovery? I, I or noticed that things that weren't as colorful. I okay. noticed just bad things right. were happening, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I brought my water to get tested. All the other parameters were good. Right. And he goes, yeah, but your salinity is really off. <laughs> he goes, go get another test. So I went and got another right. test. He goes, yeah, your salinity is really, really off. Because we put the uh, calibration solution. It's at 1.026. We put this right. in. It's at 1.019. Right. I went, okay, that explains quite a bit. Right, right, right. I mean, obviously it didn't happen overnight. So a lot of the corals had adjusted to it. And I brought it back up over the course of two weeks. I didn't, right. bam, bring it up the next day. Right. And as a result, I didn't lose anything from that, but I was losing things sure. en route. Sure. So I, I don't think I lost anything once I got it back. And now that it's stable, we're good. Right. And so, okay, back to the, the new build, though, right? So not a whole lot of automation there, um, except you will be doing radon. So you'll be doing the, what, what do they call that link system? They call ReefLink or whatever that? I, Ecotech Live, okay. but the ReefLink, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so I can check anything. I can play with it on my phone. Right. That's pretty much the only technology. You can do the same thing with the Vortec pumps. Mm -hmm. You can kick them into their program so it can pulsate. But I generally am going to keep them just on steady, yep. flowing across, and the Tunzes are what I'm going to manipulate. Mm -hmm. So they sort of blast and, and do random flows. And in that regard, I, I'm hoping to have as much flow getting things out the overflow. Because the overflow right. is actually going to run across the entire side of the tank. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be two two-inch. Uh, right. Bulkheads. Right. So, I mean, it can run a lot of water. Right, right. Two inches each. Yeah. And um, now, as far as the, we'll say this, the filtration side of it, right? Right. Um, you said on a skimmers, you're going to actually do a uh, vertex and a tunzi, and you're not talking the small ones. You're no, talking I'm talking big ones. I'm big. over skimming this tank. I want to see which one works best, which one shuts down mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And initially, any time I've ever set up a tank, the worst time is when you initially do it. Right. There's just so much stuff. So we'll let the skimmers go nuts for a while. Right. And I'm of the mindset of I can add stuff. I can't add stuff to get stuff out of the tank. Right. So the goal is just to over skim the tank as, as much as I can at first and then play with whichever skimmer works best and sure. is most efficient. Sure. And so you'll have those two big skimmers there. You said you'll have um, basically uh, some GFO and carbon. A GFO and, and carbon mud. and a miracle mud. And basically from a filtration end of it, that's it. That's it. Right? And the, the, the sump is going to be almost this long, mm -hmm. and there will be baffles across it. So anything that is oh. blown out should settle in here. And you were saying the bio balls. Right? There'll be bio balls in the first chamber to break everything up. Mm -hmm. And since it's going to be sitting a foot above, mm -hmm. when I want to drain it, all I got to do is go in and drain out of that first section. Sure. And because there's not going to be overflows in the corners, mm -hmm. that was one of the things we didn't look at. There's so much crap in those overflows in the corners. Right. There's aptasia. There's all kind of vermited worms. There's all kind of things that cause problems. They're all in the overflows in the corner. Right. By having an external overflow sitting outside, I can clean it anytime I want. Right. I can shut off. I mean, there'll be gates on both of those. So if I want to shut one off, I can do that and then clean the area. I'm also going to have a, a little baffle like in the middle. Mm -hmm. So if I want to put something in between, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Like Sanjay brings his clownfish in there. Right, right. So right. if I want to get to that point and do that, I'll be able to do that on these overflows. Ah, good deal. And um, as far as the, um, I'll call it um, dosing side of it, right? Now you On this one, it looks like you're dosing a lot more of things. I'm going to, I'm right? going to, 
play with it from the standpoint of trying to maximize as much coloration as I can. Because okay. in this tank currently, I'm not doing because it's a pain right. to add a little bit of this, a little bit of that all the time. Right. So I'm going to have two dosing pumps, constantly adding things like Acropower, Strontium, Iodine, Trace elements, potassium, mm -hmm. small amounts often, because a lot of these precipitate out very quickly. Mm -hmm. So by going to that, I'm gonna see if that's a much more efficient system and if that impacts growth and coloration even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have good growth and coloration, but it's not right. Sanjay-esque. Because right. I don't know, in, in Facebook this week, he showed one of his corals and the base was this thick. Right. And it was like concrete. Right. So right. there's plus and minus to that. He literally had to go in with a hammer and chisel to get it out of the tank <laughs> right. because it was overgrowing everything around it and killing it. Right. And, uh, and to that point, though, now he's not dosing with anything as far as like the strontium. He or, adds uh, things so sort of randomly. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. he, he does add some things, but it's not on any kind of consistent basis. Right. right. I'm trying to make this tank much more consistent from any other tank I've set up. Right. Uh, I mean, in the old days, I used to have a very consistent on the 540, right. but I've gotten away from that. One of the things I, I will sadly say is I've got so egotistical at times, I'm thinking, well, I don't need to do that. I said, look uh, at it, yeah. But it's, it's not the smart way to do things. So right. I've accepted the, the shortcomings of what I'm doing. Right. So I've just realized what I'm not missing, what I'm missing out on, and I'm going to do things a lot better, hopefully. Right. Because I've learned from my mistakes. And with that being said, as far as kind of learning from your mistakes, the saltwater side of it, okay, you've got that Milwaukee salinity tester now. Right. right. How do you know that thing doesn't go like, you know, haywire? I bring it to a shop and we test the water together, mm -hmm. but I also have calibration solutions. Once okay. for purified, double okay. distilled, 1.0 water, and right. the other one is 1.026. So then if you would have just, even with your refractometer, started that process of okay give me the calibration solution let me look at it right i got lazy to... thinking oh okay right. this is spot on the tank looked right and i was wrong right. right so i mean i did the same thing with refract with uh hydrometers in the past right where you have three of them and each one was a little bit off and you thought they're okay but then they, you realize they were all oh, off by right. a lot right but they went the other way Right. Uh, they they went up to 1.030, which is just as bad, if not worse. So Right, right. Yeah, you can go down, right? Yeah, you can go down a little bit. Right. But now I find out you can get down to 1.018 and still have things live. So we, we've learned what the, the bottom right. limit is right. for some things. The chalices did not like the, that at all, though. Not at all, right? No. No, no, no. Okay, so then speaking of kind of live organisms, right, with this new tank, um, obviously you're going to take, you know, what you have in your 300, move it over, and then you have the frag, uh, you've been stocking up on there. I mean, is it one of those things where you're looking to kind of grow or have one collection of every coral in this one tank or what's your, you know? I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of some of the things that quote unquote, aren't that exciting mm -hmm. that just grow like weeds. Some Ceratopora, some Postlopora, some Styloforas that have just grown right. out of control. Right. They cover up, you know, two square feet. Right. I may have one, maybe two caps, uh, mm -hmm. one tipper Capricornus in the tank. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have huge colonies of it growing over everything. Mm -hmm. I'm making space for things that are rare, better colored, mm -hmm. more interesting things. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I have a lot of big colonies that I'm going to get rid of when I do this. In right. the next month, I'm getting rid of probably five of the big colonies, like the big uh, Stylophora milka that I got from Sanjay mm -hmm. that's this big right. now. Right. I'm probably going to keep a section this big. Right. There's no reason to keep a huge colony. It's impressive, and I like big colonies, but I wanna, I'm want to. i pretty much starting this tank like I did the old original 540 mm -hmm. with a lot of really cool frags mm -hmm. and growing them all up. And let's, your definition of cool, give me a uh, top five. I... I I know. I don't do names. Uh, These are just corals okay. that I like. We'll put it this way. Give me colors, color combinations. Like, because I know. No, there's example. a lot of really nice tenuous out there. There will mm -hmm. be some of those. Mm -hmm. There'll be some torts in the tank because I still love sure, torts. Sure. Obviously, there'll be a paletta pink tip and we'll <laughs> give it a spot so it can grow big and crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else I'm going to put in. There, I, I won't have chalices because that uh, stupid regal angel loves to eat chalices. Okay. So I can't put those in. I can't put any LPS in because it, it eats yeah, those yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. But it'll primarily be SPS mm -hmm. and the big yellow leather, or the big mm -hmm. leather that's in there will be in there in its own spot and it'll be down about six inches more from where it is because okay. it's now part of it is sitting yes. out in the mm -hmm. light all the time. Yes. Uh, the, there's some green pulp leathers in there too. Mm -hmm. Those will have their own spot. 
There's a Xenia that I have that has the real thick branches. Mm -hmm. That'll be in there. Um, what else? Um, that gives me an idea. What yeah. About, what about the fish side of it, right? Meaning, are uh, you going to take the Moorish Idol that's in the Elos tank? No, nah, the Moorish Idol is going to stay in the Elos tank. Okay. If, I, if I do another Moorish Idol, I've got a separate Moorish okay. Idol for that tank. Okay. Uh, some of the fish that are in the frag tank that have been in there for quarantine for six months, because i got to take the whole tank apart to catch them out, right. uh, like the uh, Fiji uh, bicolor fox face mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the purple tang. Those will go upstairs in the Elos tank. The Des Jardini and the fox face that are in there now will be gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably put... I might put the three Genocanthus upstairs, and I'll probably put two or three of the wrasses up there, although the peppermint hogfish tends to kill anything that's, that's new wild, in the tank. You know? So i got to put them in and acclimate them and get them all used to everything. Right. So those fish will go there. The orange spotted rabbit fish that came in that was this big, that right. is now this big, is going to my friend's tank. Um... Several of the other small fish will probably go into the nano tank. Mm -hmm. The nano is probably going to be a 40 gallon tank. So it's, it's not a quote unquote real nano, but it, to me it's a nano. It's going to have small fish and small corals and stuff. Right. And the other, uh, what else is in there? Uh, there's something else. Well, you had some beautiful little blennies and stuff. There's some like blennies that. and gobies. Those will go into the right. nano tank. Right. Uh, everything's going to find a new home for the most part. Because right. the frag tank is going to be a frag tank. There's not going to be a whole lot of fish in there. I am going to have, though, and I know this is near and dear to everyone's heart, I am actually going to have an own separate quarantine tank. <laughs> uh, the nano tank is probably going to be kept as a quarantine tank. Right, right. It's a little 20-gallon quarantine tank. It'll have live rock mm -hmm. in it. It'll be a lower salinity. Uh, it'll run on itself. It'll be in the bathroom. And I'm probably going to run it for maybe six or nine months. Mm -hmm. But after that, I'm not planning on adding any more fish to this tank. Mm -hmm. I mean, once I have all the tanks done... They're pretty much done because there's not a whole lot oddball fish-wise coming in that I'm going to spend, you know, eighteen thousand right. dollars on a debilious angel or something like that. Right, right. You know, <laughs> if they start breeding them and they come down to, you know, right. like two hundred dollars, <laughs> yeah. Right. But I'm, I'm. There's not much else I want. <laughs> right. So fish-wise, I'm pretty happy with what I have and what's going in. Coral-wise, there's a few. Mm -hmm. Frag packs I will probably buy right, right. to fill in some of the spots. Because until I put it all together, until I take everything out, right. I don't know what I have and I don't know what the space is going to be. I mean, I have it visualized in my head, but it's going to be interesting to see how much more space there is in this. Right. Because that tank is packed. Well, I mean, and in my mind, you like you said, you're keeping the same amount of rock. Yeah. Uh, so, Sam and Marat, big bigger tank. You should have a lot of space. I should have a lot more space. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, may, I mean, I may put like I may put a box of rock in, mm -hmm. just to, to fill up some of the space. Mm -hmm. But if I do that, it's probably going to be dry rock because I have enough live rock. Right. But I have live rock in the bottom under there. I have bought live rock in the bottom of both the tanks upstairs. If I want to use live rock, I have enough live rock. Right. Right. So I, I, I may get some dead rock to go with it just if I can get bigger pieces, but yep. that's going to be about it. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, so we talked about lighting, filtration, tank, uh, inhabitants. Dosing. What about stands? How, how the, the stand is going to be a, a three-inch I-beam powder-coated. I'm going to mm -hmm. cut it with epoxy as well. Uh, I'm, this, like I said, this is the last tank. I don't want anything rusting out. But a three-inch I-beam stand isn't going anywhere. Actually, this is all aluminum, so it's not going to rust anyway. Okay. And are you going to wrap it at all or no? No. No, so now it's wide open at the bottom. It's going to be wide open at the bottom, and there's not a sump underneath it. So it's not going right. to have the water splashing up underneath it. It's not going to have any water anywhere near it for the most part. So then you find a new home for all your stuff that you normally put on your canopy. Yeah. You can put it'll, it down there. It'll be, so that is what I'm planning on doing. Right, what I'm right. planning on doing is having things on wheels. Right. But I can just slide out when I need them and slide them back in. Yeah. That, that, again, that's what I was going for. What are you putting underneath there? What are you doing? That, that's what I'm looking for, like sweater boxes. Yes. I will probably have like four sweater boxes under there with mm -hmm. lids on them. Pull mm -hmm. them out, open them up. All the stuff I need is right there. Mm -hmm. Put them back under. They're dry. Sure. So, I, like I said, I'm trying to make this easy, neat, and clean. Whether I can do that or not is still debatable. Sure, sure. Because well. I mean, I'm a collector of stuff. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get away from that. <laughs> well, that'll be the joy of this whole process. We can... Oh, and we it can, is a process. But, it, I mean, one of the joys, I mean, there was just a poll on uh, Reef to Reef. You know, what's your joy uh, that you get in a hobby? Is it setting up new tanks? Is it just sitting right. and observing? Is it getting new things? Is it growing stuff out from frags? Right. I, I enjoy all of it, 
But I have to admit, I enjoy, I've enjoyed this process of trying to put this whole tank together and come up with ideas in my head. Right. Like the external overflow that I think is a cool idea. Right. Having the plumbing go down and up and back up into the frag tank instead of having pumps and stuff. Reducing the number of power heads and pumps I have on the tank is, is to me, a cool idea. Right. Um, just making it a lot easier to maintain. So I actually can just sit and enjoy the tank rather than constantly tinkering, moving stuff around. And now will your chair still fit in there? The chair will sit over on the edge by six inches. Okay. So, so it'll, be, it'll sit out, but, but that's, that's not a normal size doorway. Right. It's right. a doorway and a half. So there still will be more than a normal size doorway to get through. Right. It's just the chair will be sitting six inches over. <laughs> but still it'll fit? So you gotta... It'll fit and I'll be this close to the glass. <laughs> so I'll get to see the fish really close. <laughs> So, I mean, it'll, it will be fun. I realize it's taken me six months to get to here. Right. I accept that it's going to take another six months to get it to where I want it to be. Right. But then after that, it, it should be a, a pretty much self-sufficient system. Right. Maintain itself and be a lot easier to control and take care of. And so right now we are at the beginning of June, we'll call it. And when is your ETA for the tank showing up? The tank is coming the second or third week in August. Okay. My goal is to have everything in by the end of September. Yeah, so when you say everything, every power head, skimmer, bolt, nut, it doesn't matter. All the tanks are in, all the fish and corals okay. are in their various tanks. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything is running the way it should be. And um, with that in mind, right, are you factoring in your typical 20, 30% like, you know? That's why I'm giving myself basically okay. five or six weeks to there do it. Is. Okay. And you take a vacation to do it? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a week's vacation because okay. that, that's what it's going to take. Okay. Uh, Rosanna will not be happy that I'm taking a week's vacation to move a tank, but <laughs> once it's done, it will be a lot more efficient, a lot easier to right. take care of. Right, right, right.